Hello everyone, it's time to check in with Kitten Space Agency, which is attempting to be the spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program. Taking a look at the change log, it seemed like most of the changes were aesthetic in nature and uh, somewhat subtle by my standards. But we do have a timer up here now, elapsed game time is being shown. So if we want to be traditional about it, the order should be probably like that. <laughs> if you want to be Kerbal Spiritual Successory, uh, then there we go. Though. Uh, the UI elements are all taking up a lot of space, let's face it. And I don't really need the pitch yarn roll displayed here when I've got the nav ball down there, I think. Um, exactly how the two mesh together, I'm not entirely sure. That sure changes when I change the, uh, the frames of reference. Um, but sometimes, I mean, I, I, those three numbers are meaningless to me, really. Uh, and I don't want them coupled with the speed, which is very important. Uh, periapsis and apoapsis are important as well, uh, but maybe the solution is to have like MechJeb style windows which are configurable so we can display the information that we want instead of having them fixed like this. But of course things will change, this is still very much in development and very much in pre-alpha, so yeah, we'll, we'll see changes as they come, but you know, they have changed this, the fact that that's displayed. So anyway, I don't know exactly what their plans are at this point. I do know that what I want to do in this video is to see how far out I can get with our little spacecraft. We have 1.3 million meters per second delta V and ultimately it would be nice if this sim allows for other star systems, right? We, we've got plenty in the solar system here we got some lines going out too, but uh, then then the grid disappears. There, there is there is a point. There's a scope invalid here, but the scope invalid is at 1,000 light years. But I just want to see what happens when we go out. I mean, at least scrolling out is fine. But then scrolling out in Kerbal Space Program is fine too. It's just that ultimately, when you get far out with a vehicle numbers have issues so i I'm, i want to see if we can avoid the numbers having issues issue and so i'm going to target for reference uh venus or eros i, I don't know uh, maybe venus yeah let's have venus as a reference okay and i'm just going to point in this direction and go and we are going to go fast. And then I'm gonna time warp a lot. So sim speed two, four. And we're just gonna see what happens. We can see the closest approach to Venus there. And then the relative distance as well. And then the relative velocity. 10x. Well, now we're really chugging. It looks good. It looks very good. Prograde will do. Oh, you didn't need to roll though. We want to get as fast as possible. Yeah, Earth is looking legit, really. They shared some updated renders of the kittens. And I know they've they've shown some parts, but I'm just interested in what's actually in the game myself. I'm surprised Earth still looks so big. The field of view is interesting. It looks better that way, of course. Venus is over there. The moon is back there, so we're not gonna like pass it or anything. It'd be funny passing it really fast though. I should have thought of that. Okay, more time warp. 30x. 
120x. Oh, we uh, went outside of the SOI. Earth is still back there. I mean, effectively, we're still going along a straight line anyway. Uh, unfortunately, retrograde to the sun. That slows us down a little bit, I suppose. Okay, well, we need to continue. It's not about how fast we can go, we know how fast we can go. It's about how far out we can go without something weird happening. I wonder if the distance units will switch to light years. You know, they switch between the various degrees of meterage. But, I mean, here map view has a scope in light years, and then AU. And then, uh, and then megameters, but it doesn't go to gigameters. Keep going. So... That scale seems a little bit different than the ones on these gauges. I can see an AU on there on the distance one, but I sure haven't seen light years. Well, there's a first for everything. And that's what we want this time. Light years. And thanks to the timer up there, we'll see how long it takes us to get a light year away with this particular OP Apollo Command and Service Module. Still gonna take a long time, so it's good that the years go to four digits. The speed does not go to four digits, though. <laughs> hmm. It doesn't dial up to the next unit, either. It just gets stuck on kilometers per second, and then they can't do anything else. They gave us more than a thousand kilometers per second worth of Delta V, so... I don't know. So, total burn time of this is about two hours. We didn't start at zero. Two hours at 99.9 .9 thrust weight ratio, probably more than that. It just can't display any other digits. So... The Expanse, eat your heart out, basically. Okay, we can't even turn right now because we don't have any propellant, or can we? Yeah, we don't have any propellant, so the RCS can't do anything either. Okay, so we're going out really fast. Time warp time. That's the max sim speed. 7.776 million. We're in AU now. That's a thousand AU out on the map. Scroll out here. That looks like this. So we are getting close to out of the range of everything. I wonder what that blue line is. Is that like, uh, well, oh, that's the three eye atlas thing. That's the interstellar one. Okay, so we got that. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, Mua Mua. That's another one of those. Borisov, yeah. Uh, but no, no, uh, Voyager, huh? Or Pioneer or anything like that. That would be good to toss in then people could visit Voyager or Pioneer. But of course, the main system is supposed to be not the solar system, so maybe they don't want to do that. Okay, but we're still not anywhere close to a light year away. This is the maximum warp. 11 years have passed. Since the scope is only 0.19 light years, we know that we are not anywhere near a light year yet. It's 63,241 AU in a light year. So we are approaching 
after 22 years, that's a tenth of a light year. And this is as fast as I can sim. So, I'll come back to you when we've gotten to a light year. Well, on the bright side, our distance on the map itself shows 0.35 light years to Venus, now 0.36, even though this target one hasn't changed to light years. Scope only refers to this sort of distance, but if we tilt the map, we can see much farther than the scope. Okay, we're past the light year from Venus, according to the map, but uh, reading here just reads in AU still, and it's been 238 years. It's a long time. But of course I'm not satisfied with this, we're trying to get to other star systems. So I'm going to leave it running. It's going to take a while in real time. And I'll come back to you once we get to a, a, a distance that is more suitable to places like Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri is at 4.3 light years. And we'll see. So far it's looking like this. Um, uh, everything is smooth. Nothing is choppy or anything. So I assume that there are no calculating problems. It is interesting that our speed varies here. Maybe if I come out of time warp temporarily, we should see. Uh, well, I mean, it's not doing that like that, but it's only when we time warp. Maybe it's because of Venus's position. Let's see. Yeah, I think it must be Venus's position. So yeah. It's calculating things very accurately then. It is Venus's position around the sun that is determining that speed difference. Okay, back up to full warp, and we'll see how far out I can get before I need my computer to do something else, basically. All right, I have returned. I did leave the computer going while I did something else, I am a busy person, but uh, we are close to year 1,500. We are currently 6.5 light years out. It's taken a while to get here. Uh, so if you are trying to get to another star system with the current sim speed, given 1.3 uh, million meters per second, we're talking about a trip of, well, so far it's been mm, maybe an hour and a half. That's how long it takes to get to 6.6 .6 light years with the max sim speed and all delta V that this pod allows for. But we are here. And if we come out of warp. Aha! It is not, in fact, perfect. It's sort of like the Minecraft Farlands thing. Okay, so, yes. I went past Alpha Centauri, I regret that. But yes, there are math errors out here. So, okay, let's get to 1x, just to be fair. But yes. So we can't really do Interstellar given the way it's set up right now. Of course, it's pre-alpha, so who knows what's going to happen. But this is, I had no idea what the result, I expected actually that the result of the experiment would be if we get out here, it'd be perfectly smooth still. But it is in fact not perfectly smooth still. It does have math errors. In fact, um, it has worse mass, math errors out here than Kerbal Space Program does at the same distance, I believe. So that's interesting. Certainly worth noting. But again, could be corrected. I doubt they were expecting me to come all the way out here, though, with all the Delta V they gave me, it was practically inevitable that I would try to get all the way out here. But yes, you see the result there. Uh, I don't know if they're intending to put other star systems at a realistic distance. I, I really don't pay attention to any of the plans. I just see what I get and go with that. because. If they plan something but don't end up doing it, I don't want to get disappointed or anything. So I pay no attention to plans. I only pay attention to what I get. And so this is where we're at. And maybe it's planned to be fixed. Maybe it's not really in the cards to have things this far out. I don't know. But 
now I know what the state of it is, it is right now. So with that result, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.